All right, I admit it. I send at Elon Musk tweets at least once a week, either telling him something about my life or asking a question. Have I ever gotten a response? Of course not. It's only recently, however, that I've started to really understand why. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I, like most of you I'm sure, have spent my life in internet obscurity. I have used the internet since the 1980s, yes it's true, I used ARPANET from Princeton to email my dad at Cleveland State University as early as 1983 I think. And of course I started to use the web in 1994 with UIUC's Mosaic web browser. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, I've really been there since the earliest days. I launched my Facebook account in 2007, and I joined Twitter in 2009. I even posted my first YouTube video way back in 2012, and you can see more about that up here if you want. So in other words, I'm no newbie to the internet or the web, but that does not mean anyone has ever paid one lick of attention to me there. I have created content, written tweets, commented on YouTube videos, posted Instagram pictures, sent famous people messages, many before they were famous, and on and on and on. Again, like many of you, I'm sure. But no one ever paid me any mind, and that was really fine. But again, like many of you, I dreamt of, well, if not being famous myself, at least having the ear of famous people. And so I would write to people, both internet famous and not, and sometimes it worked out for a little while. For example, I found the everyday astronaut Tim Dodd very, very early on when he was still doing his goofy orange spacesuit videos. And I wrote him a couple of times then, and he responded, and very kindly, by the way. And again, I found Stephen Mark Ryan on solving the money problem very early on, and he responded to a few of my early comments and questions. But both of these people became internet stars within months or at least years with Tim, and at that point their responses pretty much dried up. Intellectually, I understood why, at least for the most part, but it did kind of hurt to have had the ear of someone who then became a big YouTube star and then to lose that connection. And then something really weird happened to me. At the beginning of November 2020, I suddenly went from just a handful of subscribers to this channel to thousands and growing. This has been an amazing, amazing ride, and I'm super grateful to everybody who watches the videos, comments on them, shares them with others, and supports me in even bigger ways like Patreon. Oh, and speaking of, <laughs> please do like the video so other people can find it if you enjoy it. And definitely make sure you subscribe for more of these. And also, I'm going to be doing a giveaway of something nice if we hit 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Come on, let's make it happen. And of course, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. You all are amazing and I truly appreciate your direct support. Feel free to check out the link in the description if you'd like to join. And we'll get back to this momentarily. Also, a big thank you to Zenly Music for the intro and concluding music. Definitely check him out for some great beats. And of course, if you're in the market for a new Tesla, definitely check out our referral link below. If you click on it and order a Tesla, we both get a thousand free supercharger miles, which is awesome. All right, so after that nice little plug break, <clears throat> let's discuss what has happened since my tiny, tiny little bubble of internet fame has cropped up. And look, I want to make it clear, I fully realize that 10,000 subscribers or so is not even a blip on the fame radar. I'm not arguing anything more than what it is. But what it is has taught me something from experience that I couldn't really fully realize before it happened. It's overwhelming to have any kind of internet fame, even the smallest, and I assume that's true for other types of fame too. Suddenly there are many people clamoring for your attention. There are, of course, trolls, it's the internet after all. But even more importantly, there are suddenly so many people who are truly engaged and want to ask questions, have conversations, give constructive criticism, and on and on. This is an amazingly positive experience, but it rapidly becomes overwhelming. In fact, I've joked with my wife before that I need to hire her just to press the heart button on good comments to my videos. She, by the way, rejected that idea. I don't think I was paying her enough. <laughs> Anyway, it takes hours to read and respond to all the comments on a popular video. And remember, I normally get like five to 20,000 views per video and only hundreds of comments. I can't even imagine what it would be like to have like 200,000 views and thousands of comments or more. When Stephen Mark Ryan, for example, says he reads all the comments, I used to think, oh, that's nice. Now I think, damn, dude, that is a full-time job just reading all the comments. As an aside here, but a very instructive aside, I recently responded to a comment Elon Musk made on Twitter. It was an offhand and a little bit over the top tweet, but I had a whopping 40 Twitter followers, and in 11 years, no one has ever cared one whit about my tweets, but somehow and quite suddenly, the tweet became infamous. 
as in thousands of replies, mostly flaying me for something I didn't even intend. I ended up having to take down the tweet and post an apology on my feed. And by the way, thank you so much to Tom. I really appreciate it. He's out in California and wasn't a Twitter follower of mine, but discovered this thing and told me what was going on. And so he helped me actually realize just what a gigantic deal this had become. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much for helping me to resolve this problem. And hopefully it's behind us at this point. In point of fact, it was shocking and it really hurt me. The very people I support were absolutely reaming me for being someone who I am most assuredly not. And this Twitter explosion was what really got me thinking about very famous people like Elon Musk and inspired me to do this episode. When I see people jump all over his tweets, I now have a point of connection to that. And I realize that sometimes he just makes offhanded remarks and likely doesn't intend much beyond being silly or just venting a bit. But when you're famous, or if you accidentally become infamous for 15 minutes, you don't get to do that anymore without huge consequences. After all, Elon got taken to task by the SEC and had to resign his position at Tesla over a tweet. That's some very real-world consequences to a couple hundred characters floating around the Twitterverse. So the lessons I have just begun to internalize with my growing YouTube audience and my flirtation with Twitter infamy is that fame of any type is a two-edged sword. It's lovely to be known and recognized for something by a wide audience, but at the same time, there's a really big responsibility that comes with it, as well as the very real possibility of becoming overwhelmed by the fame. So what have I done in response to this? I've become more focused on my Patreon community especially, and secondarily with those who take the time to write me on Gmail. This is for sure a more insular group, as it is people who have taken the time and even money to support me. Thus, I feel a special obligation to that group, but I also find conversation with these people to be extremely valuable. These are people who really are engaged with the subject and what I'm talking about, and therefore it's, a, I guess, a more positive environment, and I really appreciate that. Now, of course, the downside to that, of course, is that it can become a bubble of sorts. And so I read the comments and it keeps me very humble because there's plenty of those that are not so positive. So yes, those comments actually do keep me humble and keep me grounded and not let me get too much into a bubble. I think that's a dangerous thing too. But anyway, definitely thank you to my Patreon patrons. I'm honored to be part of your lives. And thank you as well to those who take the time to write me on Gmail. That extra effort means a lot to me and I do try to respond to you. I've also realized from videos that didn't work so well, and even ones where I made pretty bad mistakes like revealing my address, and that video is gone by the way, that I'm gonna have to be much more careful as time goes on. Especially if, as I hope, this little channel keeps on growing. But let's think for a second, what would happen if this channel was suddenly 10 times its current size? 10 times the comments, 10 times the emails, 10 times the patrons, and 10 times the possibility that any mistake I made would be amplified by the internet and could potentially backfire in a huge way. These are, well, pretty scary thoughts. It would be cool, don't get me wrong, but it's very scary as well. And this is why I'm starting to get just an inkling of why someone like Elon Musk with 40 plus million followers on Twitter is never going to respond to little old me. And even people with much smaller amounts of fame like Tim Dodd or Stephen Mark Ryan are not going to respond to me either. They are just overwhelmed by their own popularity. It's really fascinating to realize just a little bit from my own experience just how hard it is to be famous. And I'm sure it's, wow, I can't even imagine being like a movie star because basically I'm unrecognizable on the street, but these people never get an ounce of privacy. They are always on. Every time they go outside their door, someone's going to recognize them. I, I can't even imagine that level of fame. And I frankly don't know if I would want that. Now, of course, would I want more fame? Sure, I have to admit that. I mean, <laughs> that's who I am. But is it all unicorns and rainbows? Not at all. It is a big, scary responsibility to have any level of fame. So will hugely famous people respond to you on Twitter or direct messages? It's extremely unlikely. Yes, it's possible, and yes, people like Elon Musk are amazing when it comes to actually responding to his followers, but with the number of messages he must get daily, it would be like being struck by lightning for it to happen to you or me. Unless, of course, you're the everyday astronaut. And if you think about someone more reclusive like Jeff Bezos, the odds of him responding to anything that you send to him are minuscule. I mean, I was a classmate of his at Princeton and I've written him about working at Blue Origin, but have I ever heard a thing about that? No, of course not. So it's incredibly unlikely for a person who's more reclusive and even someone as kind of open and out there as Elon Musk, is it's just not likely to happen. So tweet away, message away, and try to catch the ear of those who you respect. Just don't expect them to write you back. One day they might, but certainly don't hold your breath for it to happen. 
Okay, I hope you found this trip down mini fame road interesting and helpful when you're disappointed that your favorite YouTube star or your favorite Tesla CEO doesn't answer your inquiries. Do any of you happen to have a degree of fame in any corner of the internet? If so, how has it affected you? What have you learned? And what have you learned to do to deal with it? I would actually really like to know, as this is all very, very new for me. So thank you so much for letting me know. And of course, thank you so much for watching. Not just this, but all of my videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe for that giveaway. And as always, ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.